We haven't shown me to you right a long story. I'm telling you. I'd have felt down the other day if he'd had a, had a high power rifle, he'd have knocked one out. He was saved just out of reach. He knew it. I had a my gun after I lived there just to see what he'd do. He'd take off the roof of that, you know. Uh, well, didn't he take a chance to see the you know, Mm mm. Doesn't make him wild. Yeah. For a period of months to die. Yeah. That's a bad yeah. way to still. No, that's, that's a temptation to it. Go ahead for me. So it was him for You can see all kind of sights when they out there all bowed up and yeah. putting on a show. Oh yeah. Yeah. Get one time moved in another time. Mm. Yes. I was he may have heard that kind of chatter before. He skipped that up from the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. He just, just cheered. I'd have had the decoy, let the decoy look. I'd have had it out there. He might have got a draw. Really want to play? Yeah. Well. You put a Jake decoy out there and you see that Jake decoy. He'd have to be in. Maybe you have to come, by, come over there. Well. Maybe it, maybe in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you now for what you've done, and thank you for what you're going to do, and we bless your holy name now. 
Love us, Father. Help us and keep us. Only you can do it and you will do it. And we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let the leaders to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I'd like to move everyone to our meeting this Monday, April 3rd, 2023 at 6 p.m. We have a conference line set up. That number will be 1-917-900-1022. Access code will be 32347-PANEL. This is not a toll-free number. You may be subject to long-distance charges according to your long-distance plan. When the chairperson opens the meeting for public comment, please follow the below instructions. If you wish to speak, please dial star five. The moderator will unmute your line when it is your turn to speak and notify you by announcing the last four digits of your telephone number. Please announce your name and address. You will be allowed to speak for three minutes. Any person wishing to address the board regarding an agenda item will be given three minutes of comment. The commenter may speak, only speak one time for each agenda item. With that, we will move. Number three, do we have an approval of the agenda? Motion. Second. A motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We want to our consent. Uh, does everyone have a chance to look over the consent? Any questions? Anything we need to discuss? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve, to approve our consent item. Do we have a second? Second. Have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Jump down to our county staff item, number nine. The board will consider approval of proposed ship recipients an invitation to bid for the demolition and reconstruction of two homes and the rehabilitation of two homes as agenda by Melanie Cox, the grant writer. Hey, everybody, can you hear me? Hey, Melanie, we can hear you. <laughs> very good, very good. The demolition and new construction are for Carolyn Ford and Edwina Jackson, and the two rehabs are for Larry Bailey and Jay Chester. Now, Mr. Bailey, he's in a, a, a flood hazard area, and if his bid come in higher than the total value of his home, we'll have to revisit the issue with him. Um, his house is not in 51% or more district of this repair, and that's why he's not included in a demo and new construction. So we'll we'll have to wait and see how the bids come in for him. And again, this is 100% grant funded, no cost to the board. Is everybody, if I may, does everybody look at that and determine that they're not cousins or nephews or kin folks? Not related? Not related. <coughs> you are related? No. Oh, okay. Most of the You got it. You got it. You got it. So you need a motion? Any discussion from anyone? Do we have a motion to approve? I vote. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Yeah. Board to consider approval of notice of site dedication and limitation of use for Southside Park. This is by Ms. Melanie Cox. The site dedication is a requirement as with all Fernax grants um, to be able to close out the grant. I don't know if y'all have been passed there, but the park is really starting to look good. The basketball court looks awesome. But we are coming up on the finish work for it. And we'll be ready to close out that work. We want to get it closed down as quick as we can. That will make you eligible for the upcoming funding cycle to apply for two FERGAP grants this year um, if you so should choose to. Thank you. I just want to say that, Melanie, we did, I had several comments just complimenting on how good that looked, that basketball. That there was I had several comments this weekend talking about how, how good a job and how good that looked. So 
Thank you. And just so y'all know, we've already had a problem of vandalism out there. Jamie had it locked up before they even finished it, and people have been throwing rocks in on the surface. And so we, we've made repairs on it already, but this is a heads up. We've already got a bit of trouble with vandalism. Uh, yes, I do know that with them racquetball walls out there, I had also at the same time some folks standing there talking about those walls and what all that brings. Well, and that's what I wanted to speak to. Um, we'd like to move forward pretty quickly with removing those walls so we can we can plan to make pickleball courts there. Right. So as soon as, as we can get in there and take down those walls, that will be a big help. Yeah, I mentioned that to the citizens that are right. in the works, but this is how to, at that time, I don't know how to be done. So uh, any more discussion? Have a motion to approve. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Board of Consider approval of the subcipient grant agreement 23003 pursuant to the Restore Act Steel Impact Component and the State of Florida Expenditure Plan with the U.S. Department of Treasury and Gulf Consortium. Or the Keith Beach and Steen Hatchetburg Ramp Bypass Feasibility Study, given by the branch buyer. The grant is an amount of $383,665. We actually will be receiving $350,000 because the difference is retained by the consortium and Baltimore Library to oversee the work. Um, we, I, I would like for us to move forward as soon as possible um, on, on getting the council bid and getting the feasibility study underway, which I will work on um, if you approve this grant, because this is going to be the driving force of a lot of what you want to do with your remaining restore dollars. If we see it's not possible, you'll have a lot of decisions to make on other projects that you would like to pursue. I'm sure Mr. Conrad wants to talk for a minute because this contract was something else. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is, Melody. <laughs> uh, Melody, we have, do we? Yes, ma'am. Is it correct that we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 million, um, basically? set aside with our with our Restore Act funds for a construction project? Um, actually, we have about 10 okay. because remember we moved some of the money yes. into the canal dredging. Right. So we've got about 10 and a half, but we did move some of that money um, to, to help fund the difference in the canal dredging. For the act, so that, that is what's set aside for the actual construction for the bypass. Yes, yes, we've got it set aside and we're kind of waiting to see what happens with this feasibility study before we make any other um, decisions. And as with all our store act funds so far, um, there's no match to this grant, so it is 100% grant funded. This is the kind of contract that I'm sure will wind up and Conrad have the same reaction I did. You just have a vast area of <laughs> <laughs> um, This is a lot of money for a feasibility study, but I know they're expensive. So after, actually, after we get the feasibility study, then we still have to uh, go through design and all of that. So this is just going to tell us right. if if it's possible to do this and where I guess you would direct traffic? Is that pretty much what we can expect to get from this? Right, for, for Key yeah, Beach correct. and Seenhatchee. Yes. So for both areas, right. Um, and and it's, I mean, so after, when, when we receive that back, then the board can make a decision about moving forward or not moving forward or you know, if, if you don't if you don't wish to move forward, this will give you the information that we're looking for. And, and I, I, I understand, you know, feasibility studies is just that, you know, this, 
it is what it is, <laughs> but it's a lot of money just to find out, just to say, okay, this is what it is now if you want to move forward or not. But you have to do what you have to do. But a lot of money. And if there is, and if the feasibility study, my chance doesn't cost this much, it's just like an estimated amount we need um, that was projected to us. And the funds will be returned, say, if for some crazy reason it's $200,000, those funds will be turned into our pot of money. Um, we don't lose the funds. Right. Okay, so will the cost to the consortium still be uh, 33, over $33,000 regardless? Um, regardless, I'm sure it will be. They, they've got some pretty hefty fees. And we have learned the less questions we ask them, the better off we are because if it goes over their estimated hours, they do bill us. Yeah, Extra out of this grant money. Yeah, I, I just thought, again, $33,655 was, was a lot. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Well, this goes to, to pay on moral, their legal counsel, which reviews everything, and, and um, this, a, a small percentage goes into the main money holder for the consult sorting area, which uh, amazingly is Leon County. They get a small cut of it. But, but we, we know the fees up front, and um, actually, on Hodges Park, when we were awarded it, they immediately put their money out. I was going to say, I was going to say, are you trying to blame it on the lawyers? Well? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for you. Actually, the, the lawyer was very, very expensive on Hodges Park so far. <laughs> You're a long way from me. <laughs> 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 so, number discussion, uh, Commissioner Newman has a motion to approve the agreement. Do we have a second? I'll second. Uh, second by Commissioner Moody. All in favor? Uh, 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 thank you all. And before you cut me off, we had word from the beginning of last week, Luanda and I, that we should be within the next few weeks receiving um, a contract to award um, for the possible acquisition of Spring Warrior. So hopefully that's just a few weeks away too. Thank you. Y'all have a wonderful Easter. You too. Okay. You too. County Attorney Adams, 12. County Attorney to discuss draft amend, amended ordinance on planning board members. Um, I prepared this at y'all's request. Um, and what it does is it um, limits the planning board to five members from seven members, like y'all requested. The one other thing that um, you need to tell me about, I heard the someone say that y'all wanted to do term limits. So if you'll look at it, section three, it just says the members of the planning board shall be limited to blank terms in office. If you don't want to do that, we can take it out, but I just, Heard somebody say term limits, so I put it in. But I can take it out if you don't want it. Or you can wait until the public hearing. And if you determine at the public hearing that you want to uh, term limits, you can do that and you can take it out at that time. <coughs> Just it's, it's up to y'all. Any questions from the board? Well, I mean, it, you know, um, If you have term limits, it, it, it doesn't hurt anything because we don't have a slew of people usually lying us out there to be on this board. So most of the time, they're they're reappointed anyway. So you're saying that you may not be in a, a not have term limits then? I don't think we need it. Because we have a hard time getting. They have a hard time getting them. Oh, 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 enough there to even have a meet. Well, that's why you're changing it from seven to five. I don't know. But I, put, I heard, so I put it in there, but I can certainly.
take it out. And if I ever need to take the wording out or in, in, the, in the blank, put zero. And then, I mean, or just take it out on the other. I, I would recommend that. Take I it out. Tell my it. secretary to take it out. All right. As long as they're showing up, and as long as they're there, I don't care how long they're there. So all y'all need to do is just to um, make a motion for it to be advertised as a, as changed, and we'll send it to you tomorrow. Okay. Changed. Okay. Yeah, moved. Second. Yep. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? All right. And that's all. all right. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got a hug. You got a hug. You can't say it. Come on. Uh, so we're going to do 13th okay. first. Okay. And then we'll move on to the okay. 14th. Just as a reminder, um, staff of U.S. Senator Rick Scott. Um, the office will be here tomorrow from 10.30 to 1.30. Um, if you have any constituents who have issues of a federal nature or related to federal agencies, um, they'll, and they'll be here in, in, this, um, in the boardroom tomorrow from 10.30 to 1.30. Just wanted to remind you all of that. Um, also, I'm very happy to say that Saturday we hosted our first USFA softball tournament. Um, there were 14 teams, including one local team, um, some teams from Georgia, and there was a team from Wakulla that had some local um, players on it. There were 314 paid entrants, which means there were probably somewhere between somewhere around 530 people who actually were at the sports complex. Um, everything went very, very smoothly. I will say that our Parks and Recreation Manager did an outstanding job. Um, all the staff, everyone did a great job. Um, and I did want to just read to you an excerpt from a Facebook post from USFA, South Alabama, Florida Panhandle. It reads, Taylor County Sports Complex gave us a big warm welcome as we kicked off our first of many events in Perry, Florida yesterday. Deputies on site secured parking, beautifully maintained fields, and a top and a top of the line field crew, making sure fields were in tip top shape every round of the day, giving us big aspirations for the future of USFA in this new area. So, I know you have something to say. Yeah, I mean, I would okay. just, you know, elaborate a little bit you know, further. Obviously, I was there, you know, had our team there. And, you know, I suppose I watched all of our crews, and I, I said, you know, I'm in other venues all the time, and I see what other venues do versus what our, our group done here. And I can tell you, our group probably went far beyond what, what other, other venues do. And I had nothing but, you know, com good comments of uh, how great it was. And, and uh, you know, it was good enough for the USFA group that they actually have already, I talked to them this morning, and they've already added two more dates to Perry. So they added May the 6th. And they've added uh, June the 10th. So, um, so it was good overall. I mean, coaches, all the coaches, they were just like, you know, more you know, a lot of the comments were, where's this been all these years? And they, they, I only had one, and, and it was the same comment. One negative comment was, why do you have grass on that one field over there? Because when you got one field that you, you, you can't use, and that was one negative comment is, y'all have to be. On the complex like this, that has grass on the infield that we just couldn't use. So I think, you know, we probably should think about you know, figuring out a way to get the grass off of that so you can utilize the field. Um, right now, I know the only folks that do use it, I mean, that baseball, they do have a, a older group to use it, but, you know, baseball plays on clay. Baseball, they play on clay and all these, they even have the tournaments. They have baseball tournaments. They're going to play on all the same fields we played on the softball this weekend. So uh, it's uh, so it was good overall. I tell you, uh, Dustin and his group, they phenomenal. I mean, I mean, all the way down to you know concessions, bathrooms, and just you know I've had so many you know, coaches that, that, that they had went around to and said, "Hey, do y'all need anything? Is everything okay? You know, is there anything y'all need?" The tournament director. So uh, 
it was really a good event. So I think we're looking forward to many more. She actually told me today that you know obviously she added two events to the two period for this year, but she's really looking to try and get it every other week. That's what she wants to do. So she said, I'm not going to have to go to work, sir. <laughs> that, go to work. Well, really, but I will say, you know, with that being said, there's, yeah. other, there's also other, there's other uh, uh, associations like USSA. You know, it takes one group to come in and make a venue a success, so you could almost look forward to the USSA tells me that they wouldn't come here because of they they, they claim the cost, but it's not I can tell you our cost, it's not what they're paying elsewhere. So but anyway, I would I myself would suspect and, and this the uh event, the USFA, they suspect that that group is gonna try to come in as well. And uh, so anyway, phenomenal job by the whole group. Uh, Dustin and that whole group they were great. So it's nothing but good to say. I think the only takeaway I got we need to look at that one baseball field that's got grass on it and potentially see what we can do to get it off. Yeah, you know, I'm just fussing about the same baseball field. <laughs> I, no, it so, I am so happy. You know, this has just been a, a long time coming, and look how successful it was. And uh, just by what you're saying, these people want to come back, and the things that they're saying. And I went out there Saturday afternoon just to uh, you know, show my support. And, I'm telling you, it couldn't have been more perfect. That, I'm telling you, that complex was beautiful. Everything was perfect. Um, I mean, I couldn't see anything that needed to be done. It was done. It was just beautiful. Um, I love it. It's just so exciting that we're where we are with that. And I want to thank you, too, and the one that, uh, I thank you for, uh, I know you did a lot of work, and um, our overseer of the sports complex out there. And uh, the only thing, you know, that I think would be nice if we have one of those signs out front that says, uh, welcome to, you know, just a welcome, just put the name of it, and people passing by can see that, or even people coming to, mm -hmm. to that that would see the sign. But I just think the publicity would be good uh, if we can do that, but it was perfect, uh, no compliance. Um, uh, we will add <coughs> that our bit, we, had, we ended up with one vendor this time, we had, we had other vendors at the blue draft, but we only went on the town this weekend. So the vendor we had there, they they sold out by yeah. three or four or five. I mean, they just, I think it said for three or four hours, it was just steady, steady, steady. So. And I appreciate the board's support with that. I know that's something new we haven't done before, but I had heard enough comments about, <coughs> about tournaments in the past, baseball tournaments, uh, I think particularly, where there wasn't enough food to feed people. And um, so this really, I mean, we have two concession stands going, and then we had um, the food truck there. And it, I think I, I, the whole time I was there, there was a line at, at both places, but not lines all the way out to the parking lot. And the sheriff's office showed great support. I really appreciate them. And the chamber actually put together 150 bags that we handed out to the first 150 people with, um, you know, Trinkets about Perry and coupons, and I, I just, I was really. That was <clears throat> really, that was good. You know, I did I bump into someone, and uh, they were talking about, you know, they would like to have their concession out there next time, and um, I said, well, I'm sure there'll be a, a sign up. Mm -hmm. you know, that. And the people that already paid the last time, they won't have to pay again, right? No, they'll, they'll pay for every event. But if they didn't, it was canceled. If they oh, we gave them their money back. Oh, yeah, okay. we refunded okay. their money. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this is exciting. Yeah. Good. Well, that's all I had. I mean, I thought it was just a good event, so we got more to come. All right. We move on down. Uh, Fourteen comments and concerns from the public for non-agenda topics. 
anyone in the pub. Not a gender dial. Would that be me? Sure, that'd be you. Not a gender dial. It's not on this list. Good for it. I know. We got a big problem, you know. Oh, um, state your name and address. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Steve Williams. I live on 104 Sarah Street. Now, old Dixie. Uh, we got a big problem with pit bulls, you know, catching people, dogs, other animal pets. Now, my kids, uh, I've called Mr. Newman numerous of times. You know, trying to get this resolved before it actually bit my young man. Now, my young man's bit up now. I can't even hardly play softball out there right now. What good is the sport complex? I've been, I've been on this for two years, Mr. Newman, you know it. I've called you and I've called them and I don't know. What can I do? You know, I live right there, we don't even own a bit, and I don't hate that. But when they're chasing your young ones, you know, from school bus sure. and to the house on camera, I'm showing it to these people. And I'm like, why, well, why we got to move there and drive around these animal trucks, you know? That means they're, they ain't doing nothing. Now, the, the young lady, the lady that y'all just heard, now she does. She does a good job. I mean, she, since she's been on, you know, with y'all, she's done more than the rest of them done in two years on that for back. I mean, it's just, I, I don't know. Sir, are you calling uh, animal control? Yes, ma'am. I'm calling dispatch, and then she's ready to go. You know, yeah. When you call animal control, what do they tell you? Well, they say they'll be there. And that one, I waited last year for over an hour and a half. I ain't seen nobody. You know, I called Mr. Newman, and then, you know, of course, he come on out after he called that time. But it's just been a home going thing, you know, with people's dogs. They just, they run loose, you know, all out in the highway. They get out there and old get you, you know. They call a lawsuit somebody, you know, that's their, that's their dog, you know. I mean, Rick, somebody get killed. I mean, it's just, a, they just run loose over there. Is there a leash law in that area? There is, and there's we have two ongoing cases. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I ain't trying to be a foot about it, but I'm just saying it's been being a deal for a while. Um, you don't want a pit bull to bite anybody, especially a child. Well, I hit a old, uh, big old lab right there on 98, I was running like 50, 55, you know, going on to the Thanksgiving night. And uh, it was hit my mom to be suffering. And I mean, it took out the radiator, the condenser, all that crap, and I just one black lab dog. I didn't see it, it was dark, you know, in the dark. But I mean, it's painted. And you got animal control, there's a process that they go through with that. I mean, usually the dog is. Yes, sir. Crazy. And there there was just a few weeks ago a, a hearing, correct, Mr. Williams? Yes, ma'am. On, on that one, yes, ma'am. Involving you. Yes, I sir. think she's already got that dog back now. Okay. Running, running around again. But, but this isn't, this is. This is something that happened over the weekend. Well, well, what it is is, I mean, it's like that whole section right there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got the whole thing. You understand that, and that's cool, you know. Mm -hmm. I own over 50 head of hog dogs. It's, you know, I, I train them right, and they're not to attack other people. You know what I mean? But I mean, I ain't never had a dog about. You know, uh, as I did, he, he yes, everybody got to work. Can I call you tomorrow and see if make sure that I've got the details on that? Would that would that be acceptable? Yes, my number is 850 838 7592. Okay, I'll, I'll call you. Yeah, so that last time that happened, with the, I called them and they had a cat over in Sarah's yard. They done chewed his legs off, his head off, you know what I mean? It was a mess. I just called because my youngest said, that there's something going on over in that yard. Them dogs had him attacked, you know. They come and got him for about the same dog I've been preaching about two years. Right. They finally took him to the pound for about a week, and they said, I didn't go to court. Okay, I was a caller. I just called let them know they was attacking somebody's cat over at the yard. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Well, the animal patrol on me signed all this paper and notarized. I did all that, and I didn't feel about those here. But what I'm saying is, with my cat, I was just trying to you know, let somebody know. You know right. it was killing I just like to say, every time that we've communicated with one another, we have been in touch with staff, yes. even over the weekend. Did process your pictures, so I just want you to know and understand there is a process. You're correct, and in respect to the communications that we've had, we have worked in cooperation with staff and law enforcement to try to see an end to this situation. So you're certainly welcome to come out. We're glad to see that. But what I would say is that you know the whole situation is, is not just falling on deaf ears, and that nothing's been done about 
about what's going on. Yeah. It does take time. You understand some of those things. I can. I can well, I've got, I got pictures on my phone this morning that go right on back. That's what they tell me. Take pictures of the dog. Sure. Now I've got you know <coughs> more X cameras up there. Google cameras. Sure. I can go and pop you down right there and show it you. I mean, right. And I understand that, but I, I just, I'm, I'm going to be able to communicate that to you that each time that we spoke about that, we have furthered that conversation with staff, animal control, and law enforcement. So it's not just something that stopped with a conversation that you and I have had. There's been, there's been much more, you know, long and long. Now, each, yes, but each time that you and I have communication, I communicate with staff who communicates with law enforcement. So I just I just want you to understand this this hasn't fallen on deaf ears, that it's not something that's just fallen by the wayside. That there there is a process and that is being worked through. And that is the reason why the hearing took place that you're speaking about. Right. So it's not to, to come across as you're being ignored or not being uh, given due diligence. Or the safety of anybody being bitten by a dog. Well, it ain't looking good with this one right here. It's getting affected real bad. I mean, I'll show you a picture. I got your pictures Friday. I believe it. And, and I have them, Mr. Williams, you for, your, for the file. That one right here is starting to get affected. Yes, sir. So, I, I mean, I just want you to understand we've had a number of communications, and each one of those communications have been forwarded and are continuing to be processed. That is happening currently. I don't know, man. I mean, maybe so. Well, I do know. And that's why I'm. That's why I'm telling. You. I'm saying maybe send them a letter to every name deal with your dog and seal them out, pick them up. Well, sure. I mean, as Animal Control moves <coughs> forward with that law enforcement, I believe that is part of the process. <coughs> Sir, the dog, Mr. Williams, do you know if this? Per I was not able to find out today, but the dog that you reported that your child that that dog is in custody correct by animal control the first one come up the bit of cat no are, sir no yeah. sir this one this over, that happened over the weekend yes ma'am they do okay. have him cat okay. she said they got him up there in the final okay. so i hope you don't mean i go back okay well we'll go through the process uh, i mean he don't get somebody down when he the process that they work with <coughs> they, they, they cost to get the animal and there's an evaluation period, if I'm not mistaken. I'm afraid you already ain't got rabies. So, uh, well, we'll have already notified the Department of Health. He got him good right there on his, right there on his chitty, right there where he bit him, walked on to him, and right there in the main thing in his leg, right there. He bit all the canines in right there. I think they'll work through the process and maybe Mr. Ron will tell you. I pulled up there, you know, to get him where he was at, at the, you know, the neighbor's house there. And uh, <clears throat> Elena Hilton was over across the fence, and some older woman. I mean, I don't care. I was pulling out and getting my young. And when I got him, he, you know, I said, Where's the dog? You know, the bitch. She, she thought I called her a B word, you know. I said, Lady, I don't even know. You don't even care. I'm here because my young called me screaming, you know, dog attack. And then she'd be walking over here, geeking all out, and you know, the chin moving back and forth, run over there and getting in the jaw. And I'm like, really, woman? Yeah. I'm about it. Right. She should have done me, me in the county, but she, you know, they both the face turned to both of these one. It was crazy, you know. I mean, I got him and called her, this back to I'm just going to take off till he's screaming. Right. Just appreciate you letting us know. Well, I should give you a call tomorrow, that way she can kind of make sure you're running on the same page with the phone. I mean, you know, I'm just trying to solve it. I mean, it, it was bad as it was, but it could have been a lot worse, you know. Yeah. Two or three games of baseball. Yeah. Play on. We appreciate it. Hopefully they can get you some clarity on it tomorrow on what's going on. Yeah, well, well I appreciate it, y'all, and I'm sorry. If I sound like a little, you know, it's my young man. If it'd be one of y'all, it'd be the same darn way. You know? We appreciate you coming. Thank you. We appreciate you coming, for sure. Anyone else from the uh, public? I'm from the public. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sue Ellen Boblick. I live at 206 Sugar Hill Road in Steam Hatchie, Florida. Okay. And I'm concerned about several things, but one thing you brought up tonight was about the secondary road in Steam Hatchie to get past the boat ramp. Where is that going? You just want to say Sugar Hill Road. Well, we, we don't know yet. That's the purpose of this study. Please don't say Sugar Hill. 
real food because I mean they're they're all red. They fly. I was awake the other night. Fly through the eighty three wheelers, motorcycles. Golf carts. Oh, did I say it like that? Yes, I did. Um, I really hate the golf carts. I hate that we did not have an opportunity to vote on that. People that live there. Um, because I guess those folks that drive them came up here and said they had the opportunity to push it through. That was the word so used the other night in the meeting. And Definitely, they don't need to drive it at night. One of them pulled out in front of me the bar across from Roy's, in front of me, and went over to Roy's when I was coming home from cleaning the church building. Uh, and uh, they don't buy by any rules. Y'all want to change it to 25 miles per hour down there because they'd like that. They don't follow the rules. The girl off whenever they want to, they talk wherever they want to. The kind ones go off the road and let the cars by. The unkind ones don't. They don't follow the speed limit anyway. They let their children drive them, third graders. I've seen little kids with their mommy sitting beside them. <laughs> I mean, it's just have somebody down there that makes the laws that are already there on the books be followed. Ma'am, have you called the sheriff's office about Oh, this? yeah. I'm the one that does it. They go, do you want us to stop by? I go, uh-oh, -uh, I don't want them to come and get me. Because I live alone. <laughs> up near the street. I'll call them like on the 4th of July and say I put up with it four days, but I want to go to bed now. <laughs> Because they bring down the fireworks from South Carolina, so like that, and they just shoot them off the days. Shoot them off the days. They're gunfire for Sunday afternoon, putting up structures that are not having any kind of regulation. And are we really going to be a trailer park community? There are everywhere the campers. Our values are down. Who cares? They strip everything. I used to have fear on my property. I had migraines, and when my husband threw me out, I put me in jail because he couldn't get me put into an asylum. Um, I I chose the second property because it was quiet. Like it was nice. It's not in the <coughs> Lots of them. There are multiple trailers on, on property. And I thought there was only supposed to be a limited amount. Four, five, seven on a quarter acre. It's not quiet in here. You know, you can always report that to our cousins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they asked somebody if they'd be code enforcement, and the guy says, Can I carry it again? And that was the end of it. Down there and speak at you. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate you. You're welcome. That was my time up. I didn't know that. Sorry. Thank you. But thank you very much. <laughs> you want to talk? She's not going to talk. She said she'd talk next time. All right. She don't mean it. We have, uh, we're going to the next uh, board informational items. Well, speaking about. Um, <clears throat> I got a call today from someone from Cedar Rock, but they had several concerns. Um, they were asking about a leash law. They had uh, a pretty severe injury from a dog bite down there. And they also uh, questioned said that this particular dog uh, was not put in quarantine. Um, is that, you know, was the dog put in quarantine? The dog is from another county. So the dog 
So if we have, the dog actually lived in another county, from what I understand, this was six months ago. And so that was turned over to the county of residence, which is typically, I mean, that's that's the standard process. Um, okay, so if, if that, if somebody comes in here from um, somewhere else and their dog bites me, mm -hmm. and they don't have anything to show me that the dog has been vaccinated. Well, <clears throat> with this, not to get into the particular case, but I believe in this particular case, there, the dog was vaccinated and we verified that. And that the people were, let, the, the victim was notified that the dog had been? Yes. Okay. So when they're back, when they're <clears throat> when they've been vaccinated, there's no need for a quarantine, right? So I, I don't know. I mean, it's still passed. It was all passed along to the county of residence to the, what I understand, animal control in that county and the health department in that county was my understanding. Okay, so what do our leash laws say? What, what, what's, what's on the books about leash laws in the county? That, from what I recall, um, dogs are either to be on a leash or under verbal command of the owner. And when that doesn't happen, are there, what happens then? Well, if somebody reports it, then the owners are normally given a courtesy notice for running at large. And then we go through that process. Um, and if there's multiple infractions, then eventually we can go to court. Were there any fines or, or anything? Was that determined in court? <clears throat> there are fines, but that's something that the judge has <clears throat> fine to say about, basically. Okay, so we don't have any kind of ordinance or anything that says this, that, and the other. Uh, not specifically, not to, specifically to the amount of fines, but if we, if we pick up a dog and we have it at animal control, people have to pay for yeah. to get their dog out right. or the, the number right. of days that it's there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I had a complaint. Now I don't know what to do about it, but I had a lady in a call me just before the meeting and said that dump trucks were speeding by on the college 14 between 221 and 19. Um, I guess just contact the sheriff's office, maybe, huh? Let them call the sheriff's office. Do they know what? She didn't say. Okay. She just said there were a lot of dump trucks flying by. That's all. I was going to talk about the sports complex, but I already have. So <laughs> that's all. Thank you. No, sir. And I have already stated what I was going to talk about. So uh, that being said, we're right here. Thank you, John. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. And a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 A